And this is an important step because we're going to go and use this to create an even more complex um, ge geometry type. Um, using one of the more powerful set of tools, I think, in the Puffer Fish um, toolkit. And that tool is called the Twisted Box Components, or the Twisted Box Transformation Tools in Puffer Fish. They're perhaps some of the most powerful and fun tools that I think we could use um, in this plugin. They basically allow us to tween, transform, and morph all types of interesting geometries. Uh, so we're going to use these tween meshes we have here to create something really complex um, with this kind of base component that I've got sitting over here on the side. So just a heads up, I'm going to also make use of the Weaver Bird plugin in this demonstration. You don't necessarily need it to complete this little demo, but I just want to create a smooth geometry with the final outcome, and if you've got it installed, um, that'd be great. So, um, I'm actually going to make a copy of all of this, because rather than redoing it, we might as well just go and use it as it is. And we'll come over to the Twisted Box uh, components, and we're looking for the Twisted Box Consecutive Meshes tool. So that's sitting right here. There's obviously a lot of Twisted Box components, and throughout this tutorial series, we'll take a bigger look at a few of these tools and how we can make really good use of them. Um, but right now, we're just going to look at the Twisted Box consecutive meshes there. Drop that in here. Um, as we've always done, it's a tweening exercise. So we can basically go ahead um, and actually, instead of tweening this guy, we can put this one in first and this one in second, like that. Um, I might just preview off this so we can get a better look at what it's doing. So what it's uh, trying to do here is it's trying to create a um, collection of boxes that tween through our base meshes, and they're following that topology. So I'm going to plug in the graph map arrange that we copied earlier so we can get more divisions in between that tween. Plug that into parameters W. You can see like that. And for those of you who don't quite understand what a twisted box is, it's essentially a transformation tool that is going to enable us to morph any type of geometry and stick it into these little boxes we've created. So we've gone and created 343 twisted boxes in this little array here. And we're going to grab this geometry over here, and we're going to morph it into each one of these boxes that we see. So let's reference this geometry in. I'm going to create a mesh component and go set one mesh and reference him in. And to morph them into the boxes, we need to create our box around this geometry itself. So let's create a bounding box component there. And that's going to serve as the box that encases our geometry. Now, basically the way that I've designed um, this component is that it's going to tessellate. And I'm just going to turn all our grass off, off for a second and demonstrate this. If I copy this on top of itself, you see how it continues its tessellation. Similarly, if I copy it, you know, to the side or up here, it's going to tessellate itself over and over again. And that's very deliberately um, that I've modeled it like this. Basically, it's going to sit in each of these boxes and it's going to tessellate through all of these twisted geometries and hopefully give us a really complex outcome whereby the base geometry that we're using actually kind of dissolves and morphs into the greater whole that we're getting out in puffer fish. So to put this um, sorry to put this mesh into these boxes, we need to use the box morph component, which isn't actually a um, puffer fish um, component. It just sits in your transformation tab there in Grasshopper. And the geometry that we want to morph is this mesh. The reference box that we want to mesh is this container that's containing our current geometry. And then the target box is all of these boxes that we've created using the twisted box component. So we'll drop that over there. And you can see straight away that our little piece of geometry has gone and morphed itself into all of our twisted boxes in quite an interesting way. So you're getting a pretty complex um, piece of geometry coming through here. So the next little step that I want to do um, is I want to join all of these. So I'm going to use the mesh join component like that. So they become one mesh rather than 343 separate meshes. So I'm getting an invalid mesh, which is a little bit annoying, but um, that's okay. And then I'm going to use Weaver Bird. I'm going to use the Catmull Clark subdivision tool. Um, how many levels do I want? I probably want to have 
Zero to three, but I might have two actually. Zero to two, and then we'll give the option of three. So we'll plug that guy into there. And do I want to smooth the naked edges? No, I want to fix the naked edges, I think. So we will um, copy that, and we'll make smooth naked edges a value of one. Plug those mesh curves in. And what that'll do is it'll just smooth out some of those geometries we've got here and output our final mesh. Um, I might just unify the normals because I'm pretty sure if we preview this we'll get all these weird intersections. See, see how we get this obvious change in geometry here? If we unify all the um, faces by, by using um, mesh unify normals, um, it should basically get rid of that awful piece of geometry there. It's just turning all the faces um, to make sure they're facing the same way. And then we get this really complex geometry. Might just um, disable all the stuff we've done before this. Sorry. Oops. Disable. There we go. So we can get a really good look at this guy. Oops. Preview on. Zoom. And if we go into rendered mode, we've gone and created a really complex piece of geometry from a very series um, of simple steps just using Pufferfish. So you can already start to see some of the potential of this um, plugin and its ability to quickly manipulate geometries and make them much more complicated than they could be. Uh, in future tutorials, we're going to take a look at um, some of these twisted box components in more depth and see what types of other complexities we can draw out using the Pufferfish plugin.